<laughs> oh, it's a crisp Monday morning here and uh, Mr J is just heading off to work as I head out uh, to the annual vegetable garden. That's much too cold to do any planting or uh, moving any soil around because that's just going to destroy its structure. I could shift a few more wood chippings uh, onto the ground but you know that's all that's going to do is insulate the cold into the ground so I'm going to wait until uh, the frost has gone and uh, but what I can do out here uh, is look at whether <laughs> whether it's warm enough or whether it's too cold uh, to get another couple of raised beds put together and um, and that actually past me just wants to come out here and appreciate the plants uh, in this beautiful twinkly light uh, the the frost as always has made everything shimmer and now the sun is on it the sun's really golden and um, and it's just making the frost look so pretty it's commuting time everybody's racing up and down the road to go off to their jobs in offices and factories so the road is quite noisy and it's funny because you know the road is quite close and yet most of the time I don't even notice it just don't notice it but I think this summer day it's a good thing to come out and just look at what's going on It gives me a moment to, well, to appreciate what we've got here. It's a good start to the day to gather my thoughts and work out what it is that I'm going to do. And Monty's out here enjoying the warmth of the winter sunshine with me. Well, oh, I've got to say, it must be pretty cold to be sitting on <laughs> on a surface that's a bit frosty. You right there, boy? So the frost has knocked back the pumpkin and squash plants. They're very definitely <laughs> looking quite frosted. But it has revealed that we've got several small squashes they're not very big uh, about the size of my hand but there's two that size and a couple that are smaller now almost inevitably a couple of days after a, a party with small children uh, both mr j and i are uh, sounding a little bit coldy and feeling a little bit coldy but yeah you know, small price to pay to spend some time with your grandson isn't it really uh, but you will have to excuse uh, if i have croaky voice moments um, and I'm sounding a bit bunged up uh, it's because well because I am a bit bunged up uh, but we were saying this morning over breakfast uh, since we've been here how few of those minor ailments we get uh, less colds less coughs less sore throats uh, than we did when we were working in offices all day long and uh, and although both of us uh, got out and about in our office jobs uh, and we met lots of people because we were both working here in industries uh, with people around us all the time but we have an awful lot less of those uh, minor colds and and fluey type things uh, just because i think a we're healthier uh, we're eating a healthier diet we're out in the fresh air more and we just have less contact well certainly i do uh, have less contact uh, with large numbers of people. The pond is quite icy this morning. This is the wildlife pond and you can see that the, the ice is just forming in layers. Now it's not it's not terribly thick. I can just pop it with my finger. But it's cold enough to have a bit of ice and yet still in the last few days we have been harvesting raspberries and uh, and wild strawberries. <laughs> and uh, the last couple of apples off the trees and you know we are still we're still harvesting autumn fruits uh, which is absolutely fantastic for the middle of November 
yesterday I noticed that the pheasant berry bush, the uh, Leicesteria formosa, uh, the berries are just now becoming ripe. So there we go, the ones that are turning the dark purpley black colour, they are they're getting ripe. Oh, it's very exciting. Neither Mr. J nor I have, have eaten uh, pheasant berries before and uh, I understand that it is very wise to uh, try just a few to start with uh, because apparently they can give you a bit of an upset tum. However, I'm thinking that maybe I should collect them and freeze them and then when I've got enough make a very small batch of wine from them. That might be nice. So I'm still undecided with what I'm going to do today. It will be something outside. There will be a woodwork project involved somewhere. There are two main projects on the go. Uh, one is to get the rest of those raised beds made and the other one is to uh, finish the covered run in the uh, in Big White field uh, because it's really not all that long before we are likely to get uh, a lockdown again. And in case you're not familiar with it, the lockdown is the name that the what that many of us UK poultry keepers have given to the uh, government instruction that our birds have to be kept under cover, which we had to do between the uh, beginning of December and the end of March. It's four months of having your birds uh, under cover all the time. And uh, for birds that are used to free ranging, that was quite tough. And for poultry keepers who are used to their birds free ranging, that was also quite tough. Uh, and in some places it, it was as much as five months, uh, possibly even six, I can't remember. But it was a long time. And uh, it's done while the uh, while the migratory birds are passing overhead to try and minimise the risk of uh, avian flu being contracted into domestic and commercial flocks. And so it didn't matter whether you had uh, 20,000 birds or just two birds they still had the same rules applied to them uh, and there were additional biosecurity measures that we had to uh, had to do and uh, DEFRA and AFA uh, who are the um, who are the governing bodies of uh, agriculture and uh, livestock so it was the animal and plant health authority and DEFRA which is the department for uh, environment uh, farming and rural affairs uh, basically they, they have already started indicating that it will happen here uh, if there is an increased risk of avian flu and avian flu has already been found in places like Holland um, so and I think possibly Italy but I could be making that up so it looks like it's probably going to happen again this year and uh, I want to be ready for it when it does rather than have a, a panic Oh good grief, I've got to get my birds under cover. So the more I can do in preparation, the better. I'm going to leave them to it in that little scrubby patch of singing nettles because that is one of their favourite places to lay and uh, I don't want to put them off laying any eggs today. Uh, we've had four but that's not very many. Uh, we've been getting five and six a day from them so there's still a couple of birds uh, waiting to lay. Well that's it for me today. I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to tackle but I do need to get on with some jobs. Uh, and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today i hope you have a moment of sunshine and something to smile about and i also hope you can join me again tomorrow <laughs>